सुप्रीम कोर्ट क्लैम्स डाउन ऑन हेट स्पीच ऑर्डर एक्शन बाय टेकिंग सुओ मोटो कॉग्निजेंस ऑर्डर एप्लीकेबल टू ऑल स्टेट्स एंड यूनियन टेरिटरीज An important decision of the Supreme Court on divorce. Court can pass decree in case of mutual consent. Article 142 quoted. India's first sea tunnel will open soon. Work likely to be completed in November. Mumbai Municipal Corporation is building it. India again slipped in the World Press Freedom Index ranked in the last 20 countries political interference and corruption in media cited as the reasons US commission releases religious freedom report told religious freedom in India as serious India rejected the report Recently the Supreme Court gave an important decision related to hate speech under this the top court has expanded the scope of this order by changing its old order now this order will be implemented on all states and union territories the bench says that the police should take suo moto action against hate speech without waiting for any complaint The apex court has ordered such action irrespective of religion so as to protect the secular nature of the nation. Apart from this the court has also mentioned sections of IPC that is Indian Penal Code with some specific provisions. These include sections like 153A, 153B, 505, 295A. Significantly section 153A of IPC is related to promoting enmity between different groups on grounds of religion according to this if a person does any such act on the religious sentiments of any religion or sect which creates an obstacle in public peace then he will be booked under section 153A of IPC such an offender may be punished with imprisonment either for a term which may extend to 3 years or with fine or with both on the other hand section 153b is related to speech having an effect against national unity or imputation or accusation thus sections 153a and 153b make acts of creating enmity and hatred between two groups punishable section 505 makes it an offense to publish and disseminate material that is likely to create hatred or ill will between different groups significantly the crimes that come under this fall under the category of non bailable offense in ipc on the other hand if a person intentionally or maliciously does any act or makes any statement in this context with the intention of hurting the religion or religious feelings of any section of the indian society then he is considered guilty under section 295a Recently a five judge constitutional bench headed by justice SK Kaul gave an important verdict regarding divorce the apex court also said that it can pass a decree for divorce in reconcilable cases of marriage for this the court can exercise its full powers under article 142 of the constitution the court said that it can end any marriage on the basis of not being able to fill the rift between the spouses in such a situation there is no need to send the parties to the family court where they have to wait for 6 to 18 months let us tell you that this decision has come in the shilpa salesh versus varun shrinivasan case filed in the year 2014 they had filed a petition for divorce under article 142 of the indian constitution Significantly section 13b of the Hindu Marriage Act 1955 deals with divorce by mutual consent. Section 13b1 says that both the parties can petition the district court to dissolve their marriage. The grounds would be that they have been living separately for a period of 1 year or more or that they can no longer live together or wish to end the marriage mutually. Section 13b2 states that both the parties seeking divorce have to wait for 6 to 18 months from the date of filing the application. 6 months time is given so that the marriage can be saved. After this period the court can issue an order of divorce after hearing both the parties. 
However, these provisions are applicable when at least one year has passed since the marriage. The Supreme Court's decision has come in contrast to waiting for the mandatory period prescribed under Section 13b of the Hindu Marriage Act. Significantly, Article 142 of the Constitution gives discretionary power to the Supreme Court. It states that the Supreme Court in exercise of its jurisdiction may pass such decree or make such order as may be necessary for securing complete justice in any case or cases pending before it. In other words, this article deals with orders for complete justice in any matter pending before the apex court. Recently, the union cabinet chaired by the Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi approved the National Medical Devices Policy 2023. The objective of this policy is to create a comprehensive setup for the development of this sector in a coordinated manner. Apart from this, it also intends to regulate the medical device industry to manage a variety of activities. Through this policy, the government has set a target of achieving 10-12% to share in the global market in the next 25 years. At the same time, India's image has to be presented at the global level in the manufacture and innovation of medical devices. According to experts, this policy is expected to boost the medical device sector from the current 11 billion US dollars to 50 billion US dollars by 2030. The sector will be facilitated and guided by a set of strategies which will be based on six broad areas of policy action. Provision has been made for single window clearance system for licensing of medical devices to all stakeholder departments and organizations to regulate the sector. Apart from this, structural reforms are also envisaged by setting up large medical device parks and clusters equipped with world-class infrastructure facilities. The policy seeks to promote R&D and complement the department's national policy on R&D and innovation in the pharma medtech sector in India, so as to establish centers of excellence in academic and research institutions, innovation centers, plug-and-play infrastructure and support startups. Apart from this, the focus will also be on human resource development to ensure supply of skilled workforce like health experts, managers, technicians. NMIS, that is National Manufacturing Innovation Survey 2021-22, was released recently. This survey has been jointly released by the Department of Science and Technology and the United Nations Industrial Development Organization. The objective of this survey is to enhance the competitiveness of Indian manufacturing and increase its share in GDP. It measures the performance of states and regions in relation to firms' ability to produce new products, services and business processes. The survey is based on two dimensions. First, innovation processes, outcomes and constraints in a manufacturing firms are examined. Second, the innovation ecosystem affecting innovation outcomes in these firms has also been studied. In the survey, Karnataka has been described as the most innovative state. It is followed by Dadra and Nagar Haveli, Daman and Diu, Telangana and Tamil Nadu. Telangana topped in the terms of participation of innovative firms. It is followed by Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. Odisha, Bihar and Jharkhand are among the states which have seen the lowest share of such firms. The survey cited lack of internal funding, high innovation cost, and lack of funding from external sources as barriers to innovation. According to the survey, Gujarat, Dadra and Nagar Haveli, Daman and Diu face large-scale innovation barriers despite being industrial regions. Let us tell you that for the first time, the National Innovation Survey was released in the year 2011. The objective of this survey is to evaluate the innovation performance of Indian manufacturing firms. According to experts, this survey will help in making the Make in India program, especially the incentive schemes related to production beneficial. It will also boost manufacturing in various sectors including electronics, pharmaceuticals and automobiles. Recently, India's Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar inaugurated the MEC that is Millet's Experience Center at Delhi Heart, New Delhi. It has been established by NAFED, that is National Agricultural Cooperative Marketing Federation of India Limited, in collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture. Its objective is to increase awareness about millets and encourage its adoption among the general public. 
Significantly, with the establishment of MEC, India will move towards becoming a global center for millet. According to experts, this will not only boost the nutritional benefits of millets, but will also help establish Sri Anand as a nutritional powerhouse. In fact, during the Global Millets Conference this year, the millets were given the name of Sri Anan. Its purpose was to do international branding of millets. In addition, customers can also buy a variety of ready-to-eat and ready-to-cook products from local millet startups at MEC. MEC will offer consumers a menu of millets food items and an in-store shopping experience. It is noteworthy that the United Nations General Assembly had declared the year 2023 as the International Year of Millets on India's proposal, supported by 72 countries. In this sequence, the government has set a target of organizing events based on course series throughout the year. Recently, the international organization Reporters Without Borders released the World Press Freedom Index 2023. Ranking was released for 180 countries. The theme of the World Press Freedom Index 2023 is journalism under digital siege. Norway, Ireland and Denmark rank in the top 3 for press freedom while North Korea is at the bottom. Among the neighboring countries of India, Sri Lanka and Pakistan have shown significant improvement in press freedom index. Sri Lanka is ranked 135 this year, which was 146 last year. Whereas Pakistan is at 150th position this year which was at 157th rank in the year 2022. India has got 161st position in this ranking with a loss of 11 places. India's ranking in the year 2022 was 150th. According to the report attacks on media personnel increasing political interference in the media and corruption are the main reasons for this decline. Let us tell you that Reporters Without Borders is a non-profit organization of France that works as a watchdog on the actions of the media at the global level. Its main objective is to protect and promote media freedom. Its headquarters is in Paris. This organization releases the Press Freedom Index every year since 2002 for most of the countries of the world. It is prepared on the basis of five parameters. These parameters are political context, legal framework, economic context, socio-cultural context and security. According to media reports, India's first undersea tunnel project is expected to be completed in November this year. The length of the tunnel is 2.07 km of which about 1 km is under the sea. It is 17 to 20 meters below sea level. Its diameter is 12.19 meters. It starts from Girgaon in Maharashtra and ends at Priyadarshini Park in Breach Candy. It is being constructed by the Brihan Mumbai Municipal Corporation and is a part of Mumbai Coastal Road project. Under this an 8 lane expressway is being constructed connecting Marine Drive in South Mumbai to the Verli end of the Bandra Verli Sea Link. At present it takes more than 40 minutes to cover this distance. But with the completion of the proposed project The travel time will come down to about 12 minutes. The project is estimated to cost around rupees 12700 crore. After the completion of this project, it will be the first undersea road tunnel in India. The government of Maharashtra started this project in view of problems like traffic, transportation and pollution. Let us tell you that last month for the first time in the country a metro has passed under the river. For this, a tunnel has been built under the hogli river in kolkata this metro connects kolkata to havra recently scientists have discovered 19325 new sea mounts through new high resolution data in the 2011 count scientists mapped 24000 sea mounts in the world's oceans this information has been published in the report of an organization named science for all Actually sea mountains are mountains formed under sea water. It is formed through volcanic activities. It is known as the hotspot of marine life. Most sea mounts form near mid-ocean ridges, intraplate oceanic island chains with volcanic and seismic activity. These sea mounts can be active, extinct or dormant volcanic mountains. Since sea mounts are formed by coming out of molten magma and solidifying, 
For this reason, they provide information about the composition of the mantle, the middle layer of the earth. They also provide information related to the development of tectonic plates. Apart from this, oceanographers study sea mounts to find out about the ability of sea water to circulate and absorb carbon dioxide. In general, surveyors can map sea mounts in two ways. The first method is topographic mapping. For this, eco sounders or multi beam sonar are used on ships. The second is gravity field mapping. Satellite altimetry is used for this. Let us tell you that scientists have detected the sea mount through topographic mapping. Apart from this, several satellites developed by India and France has made important contribution in this field. Recently, the news of the death of 11 people has come to light due to the leakage of poisonous gas in Ludhiana, Punjab. According to the news, this gas leak happened from the manhole of the sewer. The name of this gas is hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide is a compound of hydrogen and sulfur. Its chemical formula is H2S. Its smell is like that of rotten eggs. This gas is very toxic, corrosive and inflammable. It is a colorless, highly acidic and deadly gas. It turns blue litmus paper into red. This gas is used in the chemical and manufacturing industries. Talking about its physical properties, it is heavier than air and soluble in water. It is often produced by microbial degradation of organic matter in the absence of oxygen gas. For example, in swamps and sewers, organic matter decomposes by this process. This process is commonly known as anaerobic digestion, which is carried out by sulfate-reducing microorganisms. In addition, H2S is also produced from some sources of volcanic gases, natural gases and well water. Recently, USCIRF, that is the US Commission on International Religious Freedom, released its annual report. It delved on the deteriorating condition of the religious freedom around the world. For this, the Commission has made a scale for the events that took place around the world during the year 2022. It also includes important developments in countries such as Afghanistan, China, Cuba, Iran, Nicaragua and Russia. In its report, USCIRF has recommended the US State Department to classify 17 countries as countries of particular concern. According to the report, the governments of these countries are seriously violating the right to freedom of religion or belief or are not doing anything to prevent this violation. These include Myanmar, China, Cuba, Eritrea, Iran, Nicaragua, North Korea, Pakistan, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Tajikistan and Turkmenistan. Apart from these, Afghanistan, India, Nigeria, Syria and Vietnam have also been included in this. However, the Indian Ministry of External Affairs has strongly objected to this. The ministry has said that the reference to India has been misinterpreted by USCIRF. Its interpretation is biased and motivated by malice. Also, the ministry has asked USCIRF to develop a better understanding of India's pluralism and its democratic ethos. USCIRF, that is the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom, is an autonomous body of America. It was established by amending the US International Religious Freedom Act of 1998. It monitors the universal right to freedom of religion or belief abroad. In this context, it makes policy recommendations to the US government. However, these recommendations are not binding on the US government. Its nine members are appointed by the president of each political party or the leaders of the Congress. These are supported by non-partition professional staff according to the commission. Recently, RBI released a report on currency and finance for 2022-23. The theme of the report is towards a greener, cleaner India. The report claims that India will have to spend Rs 85.6 lakh crore to adopt climate-friendly measures by the year 2030. Apart from this, to achieve the net zero emission target by the year 2070, India will have to reduce the energy intensity of GDP by 5% annually. Along with this, there is a need to adopt significant reforms in the field of renewable energy. 
The report says that climate events are causing a degradation in infrastructure. To close this gap, green funding needs to contribute 2.5% of GDP every year by 2030. For this, the financial system will have to mobilize adequate resources. Significantly, RBI has included four major dimensions of climate change to assess future challenges. These include the unprecedented scale and pace of climate change, its macroeconomic impacts, implications for financial stability, and policy options for mitigating climate risk. Let us tell you that in the Paris Agreement of 2015, the main focus has been on climate change and measures to deal with it. India has also talked about working in this direction to achieve net zero emission target by 2070. Also during COP27, India presented its long-term low emission plan. This includes plans to expand green hydrogen production, electrolyzer manufacturing capacity and increased use of biofuels. Let us now look at the five questions based on the bulletin. Questions based on today's bulletin are, first question is, with respect to Article 142 of the Constitution, consider the following statements. 1. Article 142 confers discretionary power on the Supreme Court. 2. Under this, the Supreme Court may pass such decree or order as may be necessary for doing complete justice in any cause or matter pending before it. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2 or none of the above. Next question is consider the following statements regarding the National Medical Device Policy 2023. 1. It aims to regulate the medical device industry. 2. Under this, a target of 10 to 12 percent share in the global market has been set in the next 25 years. 3. It has provision for single window clearance system for licensing of medical devices. Which of the above statements are correct? 1 and 3 only, 2 and 3 only, 1 and 2 only, or all of the above. Next question is World Press Freedom Index 2023 is issued by which of the following organizations? Reporters Without Borders, World Economic Forum, both of the above or none of the above. Next question is consider the following statements with respect to sea mounts. 1. Sea mounts are mountains formed under sea water. 2. It is formed through volcanic activities. 3. They are formed near mid-ocean ridges, intraplate oceanic island chains with volcanic and seismic activity. Which of the above statements are correct? 1 and 3 only, 2 and 3 only, 1 and 2 only, or all of the above. Last question is, consider the following statements. 1. H2S is often produced by microbial degradation of organic matter in the absence of oxygen gas. 2. This process is known as anaerobic digestion. 3. It is a colorless, highly acidic and poisonous gas. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? 1 only, 1 and 2 only, 1, 2 and 3 only or none of the above. Recently, a new flexible bioelectronic uric acid testing device has been developed. With its help, it will now be easy to detect uric acid. It has been built by researchers from the Institute of Advanced Study in Science and Technology, an autonomous institute of the Department of Science and Technology. It can be used for a variety of applications such as wearable sensors and point-of-care diagnostic testing. Let us tell you that Uric acid helps in maintaining the stability of blood pressure and reducing oxidative stress. Recently, the sea trials of Imphal, the third indigenous warship built under the Project 15B category commenced. It is expected to be inducted into service by the end of 2023. It has been constructed by Mazgaon Dock Limited. Also, it has been designed in-house by the Warship Design Bureau of the Navy. It is named after the northeastern city of Imphal in India. Its length is 163 meters and width is 17 meters. The vessel can travel at a maximum speed of 30 knots per hour. Recently, some statistics were published by Standard and Poor's Global. According to the data, the Purchasing Managers Index of India's service sector has become 62 in April 2023. This was 57.8 in March. According to experts, this is the highest level of the index in the last 13 years. Let us tell you that the sectors covered in this index include consumer services excluding retail, 
ट्रांसपोर्ट इंफॉर्मेशन कम्युनिकेशन फाइनेंस इंश्योरेंस रियल एस्टेट एंड बिजनेस सर्विसेज रिसेंटली द फिनोमिन ऑफ और वॉज ऑब्जर्व फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इन इंडिया The phenomenon of aurora is commonly seen in parts of Alaska, Norway and other countries. This incident has been captured on camera by the Indian Astronomical Observatory. Generally just before night or morning the light produced by a mixture of green, red and blue colors in the sky of both the poles of the earth that is south and north pole is called aurora. Because of their origin near the poles they are called aurora lights. The aurora of northern latitudes is known as aurora borealis while the aurora of southern latitudes is known as aurora australis. Recently researchers at Pune based Bhandarkar Oriental Research Institute have deciphered some ancient copper plates. After this they got information related to famous Sanskrit poetess Shila Bhatrika. Significantly Shila Bhatrika was an ancient Sanskrit poetess of the 9th century. She emerged as a poetess in the male dominated field of classical Sanskrit literature. Recent research suggests that she was the daughter of the Chalukya ruler Pulakeshin II. Karai Kudi Armani who dominated the world of Carnatic music as a mridangam player passed away in Chennai. He was 77 years old. He was also well versed in ragas and kirtans. Mani first learned music from Karai Kudi Ranga Ayangar and later from Harihar Sharma. Significantly mridang is a percussion instrument of South India. It is the primary percussion instrument in Carnatic music. It is also called mridang khol, mridangam etc. In villages people sing kirtan songs by playing mridang. Its one end is very small and the other end is very big. Earlier they were made of clay but nowadays wood is being used. Recently a tiger was caught in a camera trap in Kalesar National Park. The last tiger was seen in this national park in the year 1913. This park is located in Yamuna Nagar district of Haryana. It shares its border with Himachal Pradesh, Uttaranchal and Uttar Pradesh. It was declared a national park on 8 December 2003. It is named after the Kalesar Mahadev temple located inside the complex. Many animals like rhesus macaque Leopard, goral, barking deer, sambar, cheetal, python etc are found in the Kalesar National Park. Recently WHO has started an initiative called PRET. The full name of PRET is the Preparedness and Resilience to Emerging Threats. The PRET initiative is based on a three-pronged approach. This includes updating preparedness plans, enhancing connectivity among stakeholders, continuing investment, funding and monitoring pandemic preparedness. Its purpose is to provide guidance on integrated planning to deal with pathogens such as influenza or coronavirus. WHO will provide guidance to countries regarding pandemic planning through this initiative. Recently zero shadow day was experienced in many cities of India. This is the situation when the rays of the sun fall vertically just above an object then the shadow of that object is formed but it is not visible. Such an event is called zero shadow day. This event happens twice a year. This especially happens at those places which are situated between the Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn. Cities like Chennai, Mumbai and Pune are situated between the Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn. So there are more chances of zero shadow days. This phenomenon only lasts for a second or two or even less, but its effect can last for 1 and 1/2 to 2 minutes. 